All right, guys. Welcome back to Free Tip Friday. Today we are installing handrail posts on the deck, so I thought I'd give you a little run through on how I prefabricate mine and install them. Just this is a free tutorial Friday. It's what I'm, I'm. It's basically free tutorial Friday. What I've done to start is square the line all the way around all four sides, and so now I'm going to facet the top of the newel post, give it a little sexy look, and then. So I'm shooting her to 15 degrees. Right, so I just follow that line using this big, ugly, rigid pig here. So my buddy Nate saw my bearings are shot on my DeWalt. Close enough. Fix the rest with a file. And there we cut the post to length. And so I'm doing a 41 inch post overall. My handrails are going to be at about 38. 36 inches is minimum code for the height of deck that I have. Typically it's 42 inches, but I can get away with 36 on this deck because it's lower than a five foot drop. So. So I've got my faceted top here. I'm going to make half an inch back, square another line down all the way around. This is just a reference line and then I'm going to round over these edges, take off that real sharp look. I'm not, into, not a big fan of the sharp look, you haven't noticed. So the, this sander kind of does a bit of a rough job and then I'm going to smooth it out with my palm sander. You can see all the uh, tannins in the cedar here that hold a lot of moisture that's just kind of weeping out the end grain. Once the post dries, those will all blend in. The color will just be uniform throughout once it just, that moisture gets drawn out and dried up in the sun. So. these corners with the 1 8 round over. And if your lines, the, the edges of your facets or whatever aren't, aren't you know, they kind of got a little bit of wobble in them, I just take my uh, Iwasaki file here. You can get these on my Amazon store. Great files, super sharp and last forever. Way better than like a bastard file. And you could just kind of come along and take down any of the squirrely bits, straighten out those lines so that they all intersect at the peak nicely. After we got your post all sanded up, looking good. Find your center here, corner to corner. Gotta drill a hole. All right, once you got your hole drilled, threaded rod's gonna go in like that. 
Now we need to drill a hole in from the side to meet the top of that rod so we can get a nut washer on. So we're going to go center. Uh, you got to have a minimum of or maximum of a four inch space from the deck to the bottom of your handrail. And I'm going to be using like a three by three. So I'm going to go with six inches to center. That way when I drill my inch and a half hole with the Forstner bit, when I put my rail on, it's going to cover over that plug hole. So you won't even see it. You don't want to go too low, right? Because then you have less wood. The rod has less tension because it's not going as far up into the post. So the post will have a little bit more wobble the lower you go. So you want to go as high as possible. You can go even higher and then just plug your hole, but you will see it. I'm thinking six inches will be a happy medium. I'm using an inch and a half fried four snur bit. That's a mouthful. Hold that paper down. Now, you can do this with a drill press if you want a really clean, perfectly straight hole, but a lot of guys don't have access to drill presses on job sites, so you can just use your corded drill just the same. So once I got my hole drilled out, I can see that my center hole's coming up nice and centered in the middle there. I just take a little chisel and I just carve out the inside here, carve a little flat spot, you know, because the, the hole's round, right? And so the washer doesn't want to doesn't want to sit flat, so I'm just chiseling down the inside here so it's got a little flat bearing. Now we can just take this up on the deck, drill a hole through, drop her down, nut on the bottom, good to go. And then this should be about middle of the rim joist right there. Um, I was thinking about going right in between the double rim joist because the auger bit will likely follow the crack, the seam in between the two joists a little better, but that would put my post too far in because I drilled the whole center. So I'm just going to have to try and wing it right through here. I'm going to tilt the drill bit a little bit in so that I don't blow out the side of the, out of the joist. I'd rather have it go in towards the second member because whether the all thread is perfect or the threaded rod is perfectly plumb or not it's not that critical once the tension pulls down the post it's the square cut on the bottom of the post that's going to hold the post level and we can put some little plastic shims in it to level it out so I'll just drill the hole and we'll just walk through this together okay make sure your auger bits are nice and sharp And once I've cut my I've cut my all thread, countersunk the hole in the bottom so that I don't have a bolt sticking out. I'm just gonna put a little towel over the edges here. Because I haven't stained this post yet, and I'm gonna spray this primer for my membrane on the bottom. That seals. Ah! Seals up the pores. Cut a piece of membrane. Insane in the membrane. That prevents any water from soaking into that end grain over time. Now we can install this beast.
now we put the washer and the nut on. So she's about three eighths out of plumb that way. that way so we're gonna have to do a little bit of shimming so I always keep scrap leftovers of this Azek or TimberTech or Trek stacking PVC material especially for using it for shims so just give us a little slight angle a couple degrees chops those up Now we play find the shim. There's a tapered little 1 16th shim there. Back cut straight. We'll use these to go straighten our post. Post, the top end needs to go that way, about half an inch. So we're going to shim this side of the post and this top needs to go that way about a strong quarter of an inch so we're going to shim this side. Perfect. Just trim off these shins here. And the shims and the membrane just create kind of a little black shadow line that goes around the base of the post. It's really not that uh, noticeable at all. Once she's good and snug, she ain't going nowhere. Once the railings lock it all together, that way to the house and this way on the corner, it's going to be like concrete, man. Here's a look at the underside of the deck. I just used an inch and a half Forstner bit to countersink up around the hole that I drilled through there. Drop the nut on, and that way when you're standing back, you don't see any bolts sticking out here. So I've used this system a lot, uh, using gates and taller posts for you know, fences and stuff like that, which I don't want to cast into concrete. I've never used it in this situation on a deck framing, but I think it's going to be great. It saves you a bunch of time not having to notch and cut in your posts during the framing stage. And the post being sitting on top of the deck like this doesn't allow any water to get trapped where it's notched around your framing. That's always where posts rot out, it's where they're lapped onto your framing and the decking is all butted up and the water gets trapped in there and rots it out. This way these posts will never rot. No moisture can get absorbed from the bottom and if anybody was to damage this post or anything, it's an easy fix. You just undo the bolt, slide the post out, put a new one in, easy peasy. So doesn't take a tremendous amount of skill. It's super fast and convenient and it lasts way longer. All right, so last but not least, we've got this plug hole to deal with. Lee Valley Tools sells an inch and a half plug cutter. I'm sure you can probably get them other places that you could plug that, but in this case, I'll probably still plug it, but I'm gonna have about a four inch space, three and a half inch space, and then a three by three is gonna be the bottom for my pickets to sit on. So that's gonna cover that perfectly. So I'm just gonna orient all my plug holes be running in the length of the deck, right? And so that all the bottom rails will just cover them over and you won't see any plug holes. And then I'll just toe screw from the underside my bottom rails into the post. I'm not gonna do any fancy joinery there because that's just a water trap kind of hazard. Your railings will last a lot longer if you just butt them in and pocket screw them. Yes, even the samurai uses pocket screws. 
So I'd love to hear what you think of this technique, guys. Shoot me a comment down below. Ask me any questions you want. If you're interested in any of the tools you've seen in this video, a lot of them are available on my website, samuraicarpenter.com. Until next time, guys. Samurai out.